Good morning from Disney's Animal Kingdom. The day has just started and we are already battling some Disney genie gremlins. We're gonna show you what you should do if this happens to you on your next Disney vacation. Hi-ho everybody, this is Rob with Ear Scouts and we are here at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park to show you how you can make the most of Disney Genie Plus when you're here at Animal Kingdom. First things first, if you have not seen our video, the 27 best tips for using Disney Genie Plus, do not pass go, do not collect 200 DVC points, go directly to that video and watch it first because we're gonna cover a lot of the things that are in that video, but we're not gonna get into much detail. So if you get confused when I say things like the Disney Genie slots or Disney Genie gremlins, you can learn all about that stuff in that 27 tips video. So I strongly recommend go check that one out first. For everybody else, let's get to it. So the key to using Genie Plus effectively in any of the parks is you want to focus first thing in the morning on the rides that are the most popular. The ones you expect to have the longest wait times throughout the day. The reason for this is those are going to become very hard to book as the day goes on. Basically the Genie Plus lightning lanes kind of run out and so if you don't grab these early you're going to have a lot harder time booking them later in the day. Now you're probably thinking, well great, how do I know what those rides are? Well, the great team over at allears.net posts the wait times every hour for every attraction every day on their website, allears.net. So what we actually did was we went onto allears.net. We made this massive spreadsheet of all of the wait times across all of Disney World for a whole week. And then we found the averages of which rides had the highest wait times for each park. We're going to throw that list up right here and you'll see the top five rides here in Disney's Animal Kingdom in terms of wait time. Number one, no big surprise, is Flight of Passage. That one you cannot book a lightning lane for with Genie Plus, so we're going to cross that one off the list. Our next highest was Navi River Journey and that's why we went for that one first thing this morning. Rounding out that list, you've got Kilimanjaro Safaris, you've also got Expedition Everest and Kali River Rapids. So. Those are the rides that we're going to be focusing on first thing this morning. I think I just got bird pooped on. Well, it's a hazard of filming here in Animal Kingdom. You just might get some bird poop. It happens. <laughs> How are we going to focus on those rides? We are going to play what I like to call the Disney Genie Slots. So what that means is you're going to go ahead, start by setting up your Disney Genie service. It's going to let you pick the attractions that are most important to you. You don't want to pick everything that you want to ride right now. You just want to pick those rides that you want to focus on in the morning because that's going to make those appear at the very top of your tip board screen. So when you're ready to start booking those lightning lanes, you're going to go over to the tip board. You're going to refresh that screen like spinning the reels on a slot machine. And you're going to hope that a really good return time pops up for one of those rides that are at the top of your list. If a good return time doesn't pop up, Guess what? You can just spin those reels again and keep going until you get a time that you want. So we started this morning like we always do with these Disney Genie videos. We were up a little before 7 a.m. We booked our Genie and we tried to book our very first lightning lane of the day. Now this morning I was focused on the number one ride that you can book with Disney Genie Plus and that is Navi River Journey. A funny thing happened when we tried to book our first lightning lane. We got the time slot we wanted. We got right at 8 o'clock for Navi River Journey. Everything was great. And then a Disney Genie Gremlin popped up. It was the dreaded something went wrong message. You get this message a lot, honestly, with the My Disney Experience app. It happens more than you might think. So what do you do when this happens to you? Well, the first thing you should do immediately is take a screenshot. If you don't know how to do that, Google it. All your devices should let you take a screenshot of what you're seeing on your screen. Take that screenshot and then you're going to go to guest relations when you get to the park. You can show them that screenshot and be very, very sweet and very, very nice. And if you are lucky, they will help you out and either give you that original time slot that you had or give you like a bonus lightning lane. There's no guarantee that they will do this. They don't have to do this. Let's be clear. But if you have the screenshot and you explain what happens, usually they're going to do what they can to make your day a little bit better. And that's what they did for us. 
So they gave us what's called an experience redemption. It's basically a lightning lane that is for that one ride, but we can use it at any point during the day. It is not tied to a specific time slot. So now we can do Navi River Journey whenever we want, and we are free to book our next lightning lane right now. So we got really lucky this morning. We grabbed an amazing time slot for Kilimanjaro Safaris. We only had to play the Disney Genie slots for about two, three minutes-ish. Uh, we're actually gonna let you know throughout this video how much time we spend playing the Disney Genie slot so you get an idea of what's kind of an expected amount of time it should take for you to land these rides. But keep in mind, we are not on the busiest of days. This is a Saturday, but we are not quite at peak season yet. So when you come, especially if you come in the dead of summer or during the holidays, you might have to have a little bit more patience. My rule of thumb is I never play the slots for more than about 15 minutes. And trust me, that is a long time when you're sitting somewhere refreshing your phone. 15 minutes might not sound that long to you right now, but when you're refreshing your phone, it feels like an eternity. So. I never go for more than 15 minutes, but the good news is I pretty much never have to. Like I said, we got our first ride in less than three minutes, so let's go do it. I actually prefer doing safaris first, especially on days when I'm not doing Disney Genie, because safaris doesn't actually open for early park entry. So if you're here just as a regular guest, not as a hotel guest, you can kind of get a jump on that line because those folks haven't been able to ride it yet, uh, the ones who are staying in the hotels, because it wasn't available. So you can kind of rope drop safaris, and it's like a true rope drop, not like a second rope drop after all the hotel guests have already had first dibs. First thing in the morning is actually my favorite time to do Kilimanjaro safaris, just because the animals tend to be more active first thing in the morning or later in the afternoon when things are cooled off. Another good time to go to Kilimanjaro safaris is right after it rains because a lot of animals instinctually will become more active after rain because they're searching for water. So that can also be a great time to go do the safari. Plus it's a little bit cooler because the rain usually cools things off a little bit here in Orlando. One other really good tip for Kilimanjaro safaris, if you can, try to sit on the driver's left-hand side of the vehicle. Most of the best animals, especially the lions, are on that left-hand side. I've actually done some safaris where I was on the right-hand side and I didn't see much of anything. So if you can, sit on the driver's left. A little after 8.15 and we are on the driver's left. had to play the genie slots for three minutes and I had an amazing return time for Expedition Everest so we're actually gonna head over there and do that right now the reason I wanted to get Everest out of the way early is because we're expecting some rain later today it's a really important tip if you're here when you're expecting there to be some inclement weather especially rain or lightning because of those things can cause rides to go down. Anytime there is lightning within a 10 mile radius of Walt Disney World, they are going to shut down all of those outdoor rides that can attract lightning. So that's gonna be your roller coasters. Here in this park, I think Triceratops Spin would also go down. So we're gonna to try to prioritize those rides a little bit earlier than we normally would today, just because we're concerned about rain and thunder coming in later in the afternoon. So our return time for Expedition Everest has actually already started. It started at 8.25 while we were on the safari. So let's head on over and go find the Yeti. It's my favorite Mickey in all of Disney World. So while we are passing over from Africa into Asia, I wanna show you guys a couple of my favorite things over here. Number one is this spectacular view of the Tree of Life. So if you go down this little pathway here, Sometimes you'll actually see a photo pass photographer down here, but not always. And this little spot right here gives you the perfect place to get your selfie with the Tree of Life. So now I'm just going to backtrack a little bit to show you my other favorite spot over here in this crossover between Africa and Asia. So you see this crossroads here? There's the tree there. And then look over to your left and there's this little path. This is actually my favorite little hideaway spot here in Animal Kingdom. 
it's just really peaceful and quiet. Not a lot of people come back here. And there's even some tables and chairs where you can sit and enjoy a meal. Or if you're a weirdo like me and you've actually got to get some work done while you're here at Disney World, this is a great spot to do it. I can literally count on one hand the number of times I've seen people sitting at those tables. It is not often. And I have never seen all of those tables full, which I think that's probably the only seating area in all of Disney World where I can say that. I've never seen that one booked up. So if you're keeping score at home, you might recall that I have uh, a lightning lane still in reserve for Navi River Journey. I'm actually not gonna use that. The reason is because Navi River Journey is not likely to go down if we have weather later today. So I kind of like having that one in my back pocket right now. I can use it whenever I want. I don't have to use it at a specific time. And honestly, when you're doing the Genie game, that's kind of gold. Here we go. Next stop is Cali River Rapids, staying here in Asia. I wanted to do Cali River Rapids next because that is actually the last ride on our list that might close for weather later today. So I played those Disney Genie slots for only about two, three minutes again, and I was able to book a great return time. We booked it for 10.10, it's almost 10.05, so we're gonna be able to badge in. But I wanted to answer a question that we get a lot, and that is, what if everybody doesn't want to ride? I'm here with the other half of Ear Scouts, Eric, today, and Eric does not really love the water ride, specifically Cali River Rapids, because you can get drenched on this one. So what do you do if some folks in your party don't want to ride? Well, the first thing I will say is worry about that after you book the Lightning Lane. The reason I say that is because it takes time to go in and kind of reselect your party. And if you do that, it's possible you'll lose a really great time slot, especially when you're trying to grab one that's really competitive in the morning. So what I would suggest Go ahead, play those Disney Genie slots and just book it like normal. Book it for your entire party. And then it's really simple. All you'll need to do is go into the My Day view, click on that reservation that you want to update, and then you're going to click the little link that says Cancel. I know that's very scary because it seems like you're canceling the whole reservation, but don't worry. It will give you the option to decide who you want to cancel for. So just select the people who are not going to ride, confirm those changes, and there you go. You now have a lightning lane just for the people who want to use that lightning lane and the other folks are free to go book something else if they want. So the lightning lane entrance for this ride is kind of hidden. It's actually tucked back behind the regular entrance. So if you find the lockers, basically that's the right way to go. And you'll see a sign usually pointing you to the lightning lane entrance. Usually you'll find the lightning lane entrance right by the regular standby queue, but this one's a little special. There is a very high chance that you will get completely drenched on this ride. This is definitely the wettest ride in all of Disney World. One of the benefits of being here on a potentially rainy day is I have my rainy day gear. So let's do a quick change before we get on this water ride. And there we go. Now we are officially ready for a water ride. Got a second touch point here. So this is another one of those rides that has a second touch point. So you would not be able to book your next lightning lane until you badge in at the second touch point. It's not really worth memorizing what all those rides are. Just know if you've badged in and you can't book your next lightning lane, it's probably because there's gonna be a second touch point up ahead. This is not good. <laughs> Really glad I have an extra change of thought. <laughs> well, we escaped the rapids this time, mostly dry. My shoes are a little bit soaked, but luckily I brought an extra pair of socks inside of a Ziploc bag. That's definitely something I recommend you consider if you're planning to do water rides. There is absolutely nothing worse than spending half your day in Disney World wearing soggy socks. Trust me, I have done it. I give it zero stars, I do not recommend. 
It is a little after 10.30 now. We've actually booked all of our top tier attractions we were trying to get. We still have Navi River Journey in our back pocket. The only ride we really have left to book is Dinosaur. I'm not too worried about that one. It's not really hard to book Dinosaur usually. And it's good for us to have some rides to look forward to later in the day. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch gears to shows and uh, character meet and greets. You might recall if you watched our video all about using Disney Genie Plus in Magic Kingdom, I said that I don't recommend using your lightning lanes for shows or character meet and greets necessarily, but I feel differently about it here in Animal Kingdom if you're doing the whole day here. The reason is there's just not that much you can book with Disney Genie Plus. If you're spending a whole day here in Animal Kingdom, it's kind of a waste not to use Genie Plus to book those shows and that character meet and greet over at Adventurer's Outpost. So we're definitely gonna do that in today's video and I recommend you do the same. The other option, of course, is that you could maybe choose to park hop, only do half day here in Animal Kingdom. As you can see, we are pretty much done with all of our top tier attractions. We could easily be done with this whole park and ready to park hop to our next adventure right at 2 p.m. So I just spent zero minutes playing the Disney Genie slots and I got us a great return time for Finding Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond. That is the musical that actually closed down uh, during the pandemic. It never reopened. It's just finally come back to the parks. They've kind of revamped it and added this huge screen behind the show, which adds a whole extra layer to the show. I actually haven't seen it yet. I've just seen some videos online, so I am super excited to go check that out. We've got about 30 minutes before we need to be over there, so I'm gonna grab a drink and I'll meet you guys over at the theater. So I stopped at Isle of Java on the way into Dino Land USA and I got the Island Sunrise. Basically, it's a Jose Cuervo Gold tequila, some pog juice, and a splash of watermelon. This is definitely the drink for you if you'd like a little alcohol with your sugar in the morning. It is super duper sweet. The main thing you taste in there is that guava. So if you're a big guava fan, you're gonna love this. Yeah. So now that we've badged in, now is actually the perfect time to go ahead and book our next lightning lane. So I'm gonna do that as soon as we get into the theater. glad that show is back. It is really, really adorable. Even if you're not a huge fan of musical theater, things that are very musically, uh, I think you'll really appreciate the puppets and just the experience of it. When the bubbles come down at the end, it is just really magical. I will say kids seem to love this show, although the really little ones were a little scared when Bruce the Shark came out. Uh, but they seem to get over it so i think i think all in all the kids really enjoyed this show so if you've got little ones i would definitely put this one on your list so i just spent a full 15 minutes playing those disney genie slots normally i probably wouldn't have spent that much time on it but we had a lot of time to kill so why not i didn't really have anything else to do while i was in there I was really focused on getting the character interaction experience over at Adventurer's Outpost. Uh, I wanted to get that knocked off of our list because I have noticed later in the day, a lot of times those character experiences book up and you just can't book them on Lightning Lane after a certain point. So when I first started trying to book it, the best time I could get was 2.20. I did notice after a lot of refreshing that I was able to get the time to inch up a little bit, a little bit. Finally, I got it at 1.40. Uh, so I did book that. Now that's obviously a long way away from now. So what we're going to do is we're going to invoke the two hour rule. Basically what that means is instead of getting to book our next lightning lane when we badge in at our next ride or show, we are going to get our next lightning lane two hours after we booked it. So if you're not sure when that time was that you booked your last lightning lane, all you have to do is go in, try to book another one, and it'll show you on the screen when you're able to book your next attraction. What I definitely recommend doing when you see that time, go into the clock app on your phone, make an alarm for yourself so that you remember to book that next attraction. For us, that's gonna be at 1.20, so I already set my alarm, I'm ready to go. Got a little bit of time to kill now, so this is gonna be the ideal time to grab some lunch, uh, maybe do some other little things around the park that we wanna do that 
don't have lightning lanes. But what I decided to do was to go grab some lunch over at Harambe Market in Africa, especially during key times, like, like right now, everyone's trying to order lunch. I definitely recommend using mobile order. All you have to do is go into the My Disney Experience app, hit that little plus sign at the bottom of the screen, and there's an option to order food. This actually kind of works similar to a lightning lane. You're gonna see time slots for the different restaurants. You can actually play the slots on this if you want. I have done that. You can sort of go back out and refresh and get better time slots sometimes. But I'll tell you, around lunchtime, it's a lot more competitive than Genie Plus sometimes. <laughs> So when you place a mobile order, there's gonna be a button that you push to let them know that you're here at the restaurant. That way they make your order fresh. I actually pushed that button while we were walking over and our screen turned blue, which means that the order is ready to be picked up. So let's head into Harambe Market. The grilled chicken bowl is actually really nice. There's a chili oil on there, which is surprisingly spicy for a theme park dish. I really enjoyed it. The salad is a really nice, just kind of straight up traditional Greek salad with grilled chicken. There's cucumber, tomato, kalamata olives, feta cheese, and the grilled chicken. And then the dressing is kind of a straight up Greek dressing. All in all, a really good, healthy meal. And that salad is really hitting the spot on a hot day like today. My 120 alarm just went off, which meant it was time to book our next lightning lane. What I did this time to set up my Disney Genie slots, I went in and I selected just the shows that we have left. These shows actually stop running before the end of the park day, so I wanted to make sure I fit those in. That's what I'm gonna focus on next. Once I got those lined up in my tip board, I just went through and I checked each one to see what show times were left for the day. The one that was gonna end the soonest, which ended up being Feathered Friends in Flight, I decided I would book that one next. I didn't have any trouble at all booking that next lightning lane. It was zero minutes playing the slots and I could just grab the very next show. So that's what I did. Probably for this next little bit, I'm just gonna focus on knocking out those other shows we have left, which will be Festival of the Lion King. And this one isn't really a show, it's kind of more of a class, but the animation experience over at Rafiki's Planet Watch, is a really cool thing you can do and you can get a lightning lane for it. So we are gonna do that. But next up, of course, we've got to go over to meet Mickey and Minnie at Adventures Outpost. So let's head over there and do that. super fun meeting Mickey and Minnie but now we are jogging over here back into Asia for our next show Feathered Friends in Flight. I feel like I should also mention right now that the skies here are blue and beautiful. The weather app lied to me yet again. One thing you have got to know about Orlando and weather apps they are all always wrong. <laughs> I feel like the weather app should tell you what's going to happen in the next hour or two and then it should just be a bunch of shrugging emojis because honestly none of them get it right like ever. If you're worried because you see storms coming ahead all day long for your Disney World trip, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Here at Disney World the storms come and go super quickly and nobody seems to know when they're really coming or going. So the next hour or two is probably accurate but the rest is just a wild guess honestly. Well, that rain finally caught up with us and now we are on a mad dash from that show to our next lightning lane all the way over at Rafiki's Planet Watch, which means we need to take a train and we don't have a lot of time to get there. So let's get rolling.
Well, that was awesome as always. I love doing the animation experience. That's the second time I've done it actually. The first time we drew Dumbo, which was really cool. So the classes are all led by Disney animators who teach you how to sketch and, and draw without the use of erasers, which makes it extra challenging. I am terrible, terrible, terrible at drawing. And whenever I leave that class, I look like I know what I'm doing. I think even if you don't think you're good at drawing, you should probably check it out. It's a really cool experience. I could have booked uh, the next Lion King show, but we would be racing all the way over there and we raced here. And honestly, that's not the point of Genie Plus. The point of Genie Plus is to have kind of a race free day. So I decided to just wait and book the five o'clock show. It is the last show of the day though. So it's important that we make that. But really, once we do that show, we are almost done with everything that we could do with Genie Plus in this park. So we've got Festival of the Lion King to go see. Plus, we need to go see It's Tough to Be a Bug. And finally, we need to book Dinosaur, and we need to use our lightning lane over at Navi River Journey. So, four things left on our list. Let's go cross them off. Things are a little damp here in Dino Land. So we're gonna go badge in over here at Dinosaur. And then we only have one more lightning lane left to book. That is for It's Tough to Be a Bug. I have zero doubts that we're going to be able to book that basically immediately. This is the second park where we've done this. We did it in Magic Kingdom. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out on our channel. We have had zero problem doing pretty much everything we wanted to do with Disney Genie Plus. The rain is really starting to come down now, so I'm gonna head into Dinosaur. Well, that is much better. It is a really good thing that we knocked out all those rides that could be affected by rain earlier in the day, because man, I can guarantee you, Everest is definitely closed now. It's actually possible Kilimanjaro Safaris is closed too. This place is beautiful even when it's pouring down rain. <laughs> Pretty much as I expected, I had zero problem booking It's Tough to Be a Bug for basically right that very moment. But I didn't want to end this video with It's Tough to Be a Bug because, well, I can't film in It's Tough to Be a Bug. But I can film on that lightning lane that we've had in reserve all day long over here at Navi River Journey. We're gonna end the video with footage from that ride, but I just wanna thank you all so much for watching this video and supporting our channel. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, there's another one we just did like this one over at Magic Kingdom. You should definitely go check that out and subscribe to our channel because we are gonna be doing more videos just like this in the other two parks. We still gotta do Epcot and we've gotta go do Hollywood Studios. Until next time, don't forget to think happy thoughts, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Now let's go ride Navi River Journey.